All right, this is probably the tutorial you have all been waiting for if you've been following my Elgato Stream Deck tutorials. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Elgato Stream Deck in other programs and show you a couple use case scenarios on how I use it within my production workflow for Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Audition, Adobe Premiere Pro, and so on to really enhance my workflow and my editing efficiency, as well as how it relates to all the other gadgets I have on my desk when it comes to production. My name is Fox. I'm here to make tech easier and and more fun. We're going to do an, another Elgato Stream Deck tutorial today over on the desktop. If you haven't seen my review or other tutorials for the Stream Deck, YouTube card icon above, description down below. You know the drill. Click the links. Go check them out. Let's flip on over and I'll show you how to do some stuff. All right. This time I'm going to try to briefly explain how I've integrated the Stream Deck into my Adobe workflow. I'm going to export our current profile uh, as tutorial just so I have that pulled back up and we're going to re-import my original profile that I was working for, work, working from. You want to replace the current layout? Yes. Close. All right. Now we have that set back up. I don't actually use these at the moment. So this is, it's somewhat of a sample profile as well as what I actually use. Obviously the program currently only has direct, you know, API level integration with OBS, uh, game capture HD, and then Twitch TV functions and things like that. But you do have the customizability to trigger hotkeys, open websites, and so on. Now, I already use a separate control pad, keypad, and an entire separate keyboard utilizing auto hotkey programming to customize macros. And I have this huge long script script that I've worked with uh, Taryn from Linus Tech Tips to create for myself, which does a lot of stuff with my second keyboard. And then I have another... Uh, script here for some Windows mods and then I have another one for using presets from my control pad So I have like a ton of stuff going on here and I can't really cram that into this video Nor am I the one to ask since I'm not the one who made a lot of this code in the first place But you can do some fairly straightforward stuff without me needing to show you complex programming So what I did first was I created folders by dragging like I said before shortcuts on top of each other you drag it hold Boom, now we have an email folder if we want that for some reason. So I created folders for Premiere, for Photoshop, and oh, I launched Photoshop again. I did that in the first tutorial. <laughs> and then for Adobe Audition, as you can see here. Now the first shortcut is simply launching the program in each one, which is why I accidentally launched Photoshop, because I hit the wrong button. So that launches each one of the programs. Now since Adobe's programs are programs that you can only run a single instance of. If I tell it to launch Premiere, since Premiere is open, it will simply pull Premiere up, which is kind of handy for switching between programs as well. Uh, but if you are using a program that can launch multiple instances, it doesn't actually work out that way. For example, if we... We're, we're going to leave Photoshop open since we're going to be messing with it in a moment. But if we minimize everything else here, we go back to the root. Uh, if we execute something basic like... I don't know, uh, C programs. Do I have anything here that I've thrown on that can launch multiple times? Actually, yeah, that, that might be one. Multipar. All right, so if I tell it to launch, it's going to open it. It's going to open another one and another one and another one, and, and you can see the taskbar filling up. We don't want that. Uh, so there's nothing we can do about that other than just make sure you don't hit it more than once. But for programs that can only have one instance, it will just switch between them, which is nice. And that's just the basic launch shortcut. The rest are just trigger hotkeys. So I have control shift, oh, 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 control shift, exclamation point, control shift D, control shift dollar sign, which is four. So one, four, D, and then this one is number three. Now, the really cool thing here is that when you pull up Premiere, so this is control shift D, which applies the automatic audio transition. So if I go into Premiere and I go to keyboard shortcuts and I search for, there we go. So you can see I used the mapper and it's apply audio transition right there. Well, normally control shift something or control alt shift something or whatever would be a complex keyboard shortcut to place. But the cool thing is, since you're triggering it with a single button, you can assign whatever hotkey you want, which means you can still use the normal hotkeys provided by Premiere, which are easy to hit, you know, control D, control F, shift F. Those kinds of things that you would normally memorize or hit, you can use those just fine. But then you can create the most absurd hotkey combinations you've ever heard of. Uh, let's trigger hotkey, Control Alt Shift F4. 
You're never going to remember or hit that yourself, but you don't need to, because you can call this awesome. And then you know to hit that to trigger awesome. And that's it. That saves so much time and energy and allows you to program some really neat things that you otherwise would never just remember on a normal keyboard. And then, like I said before, if you get really fancy with the auto hotkey stuff, you can apply actual preset transitions and things like that. I have a separate video on this as well as a link to Taryn's videos explaining how he does this. Super complex topic. But as far as normal things go, you have the extreme advantage of being able to assign whatever absurd shortcuts you want here because it's just going to apply them with the tap of one button. Completely extends the capabilities of what you can do. So that's Premiere. And then in Photoshop, I have one set to add an adjustment layer for levels, for curves, and then open up the Nick Collections. So if I open up my Elgato Stream Deck review thumbnail here, if I hit this button right here, it automatically loads up a free Google Nick Filter Collection plugin for Photoshop and allows me to start, and it's going to take a second, but allows me to start applying filters within Photoshop. And these are basic shortcuts since I don't use a lot of keyboard shortcuts in, in Photoshop at the moment. Gaussian Blur is Control H, this is Control K, like these are super basic. Uh, control L, Control M, Control K, and Control H. Very obvious, and then you just still go to edit keyboard shortcuts to set those up. Uh, doesn't appear to be assigning, oh, you have to have the right layer selected, but then apply my filter button, and it will take a moment to pop up. Every program pretty much has hotkey option or keyboard shortcut option or something like that of some sort, and then I can choose one of these and apply a filter to my photo if I desire. Bam. Just put the press of the button, pulled that up. Instead of going up here to filter, uh, Nick collection, choose the right one, none of that. It just chooses it for me. We're not going to use Photoshop anymore. Let's get rid of that. With Premiere, I also have, so if we go back to the view in Premiere, so I have apply a glitch transition, uh, which is currently control shift one for me, which activates within my auto hotkey script to do something. But to see that in action, I'm going to press that glitch button. It on, What you saw happen was it automatically clicked in here typed in glitch trans, moved the mouse down, drug that over back to where it was, and now it applies a little glitch transition effect. I have an entire separate keyboard full of these, but you get the idea. Now this is default audio transition, control shift D. This is replaces something that I normally have to right click for, which is right click and replace with after effects composition. When I, when I do that, I use that to apply motion blur within after effects or other after effects effects and so I have I've mapped out in Adobe's keyboard shortcut editor I've mapped out uh, control shift 4 to automatically do that to that button fairly straightforward and then lastly to nest you know nest clips together it, together rather it is control shift 3 so then if I want to nest a couple things together to apply like an overall transition I select them hit that one button and it pops up what do I want to name the nest We'll call it nest test, and bam, we have a nested sequence. Of course, I'm going to undo the last couple things there and hit save. And then these just launch After Effects, Adobe Media Encoder, and Lightroom. And then I have it set up to launch Twitter.com, to launch YouTube.com. That's pulling up on my separate monitor you can't see here, but it's pulling up my Twitter notifications, my YouTube channel, things like that, just as a quick little test. And that is how I use it in my production workflow along with I have a Shuttle Pro, a separate keyboard, and a separate keypad of similar style shortcuts. But this is the general process of how I set that stuff up. I just have them in separate folders so I can access them individually based on what program I am using. That's it from me when it comes to Elgato Stream Deck coverage, at least for now. I've given you my review, tutorials on how to set it up with you know, the normal software, Elgato software, OBS, Shadowplay, and now third-party software. I do hope you've enjoyed all these tutorials. If you've missed them or checked my or haven't seen my review, links down below and above, all that jazz. Come follow me on Twitch. I stream three times a week using the Stream Deck over at twitch.tv slash Leave me a follow if you don't mind, and subscribe for more videos. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. I need to go stream some games, video games.